go. Yeah. For this play, this is where we wanted it. Back, looks, throws, and yes. yes. Caught! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! They did it! This is Inside the Pride, presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and airing on the Lions TV network. I'm your host, Danny Rogers. The Detroit Lions extended their hopes for the playoffs by another week after dominating the Chicago Bears in week 17. The final score, 41 to 10. Detroit got its identity back on both sides of the ball. A balanced offense with a run game that tallied over 260 yards and an attacking defense. You'll hear from head coach Dan Campbell soon on what's next for his Lions, Plus, it's our weekly player interview. First up, though, let's head out to Ford Field to relive the sights and sounds from the home finale. Lions are back home, set to face the Chicago Bears in a game where it's pretty simple. They got to win. Still in the playoff chase, but they need victories. They need some help, but of utmost importance, their game against these Chicago Bears. We don't know where we're going to be at next week. The week after that, bro, all we know is I got time. Yes, sir. No, you got me. I know you got me. I know you got me. Goff takes the snap, fakes the give, wants the throw, does right side. Yes. End zone touchdown, Detroit Lions. Brock Wright. Fields up under center, looks, wants the throw, being chased by Hutchinson. Good again. Hit, gonna go down. Kaminsky got him. DeAndre Swift takes the pitch left side, gets a block to the 10, cuts back at the 5, to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. DeAndre Swift just doing what he does. Takes the snap, wants to throw. Straight drop, looking, looking, getting it hit. Gonna go down, sack back at the 16-yard line. Josh Pascal got it. Fields pumps that right leg, takes the snap. He's back, Fields, gonna get hit. Gonna go down, they got him again. James Houston, all that rookie does is get sacks. <laughs> Goff takes the snap, turns, fakes, wants to throw, does left side, completed the five, fighting to the end zone, and getting in, second of the day for Brock Wright. Looks, looks, hit, slips that, keeps it himself, gonna run it, hit from behind, that ball's out, free on the ground. There's a pile, somebody's got it at the bottom. They knocked it away at midfield. Lions say they do, the officials say they do. Take away Detroit Lions. Trying to add to that Lion lead. There's the snap, spot, kick away. It is up and it sails through. So there's 17 seconds to go in the half. It is the Lions 24 and the Bears 10. Fields has got the snap. He's back. He looks, he looks, he throws. Picked up by Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson's going to slide down at the 41-yard line and end the half. Lions will get the ball to start the third quarter here. Just close this game out. They go on the reverse now. That's Jamison Williams at the 50. Jamison 45. Jamison 40. Cuts it outside at the 30. Back inside at the 20. To the 10 yard line and dives down to the nine. How long have they been waiting for that at Ford Field? Goff takes the snap, turns, gives to Jamal, bounces left to the one, to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Takes the snap, looks left, now comes back right, sets up a screen, got it to Swift, picks him a block at the 20, Swift 15, Swift 10, Swift 5, Swift Dunzo, touchdown Detroit Lions! Oh, baby, was that beautiful! 21 yards! Fields back with time, now he's rolling left, being pressured, looking, looking, gonna get hit, gonna go down, sack back at the 20-yard line! James Houston got him! <laughs> Bears with a first down for the Lions, 46. Fields trying to get outside, taken down, sack. Josh Pascal got him. 36 seconds to go. Sudfeld takes the snap, takes the knee. Two teams will meet out in the middle of the field to say job well done. Job better done on this day by your Detroit Lions, who win it in convincing fashion. 41 to 10 over the Chicago Bears. We got our identity back in a hurry. In a hurry. We talk about recalibrating. You guys are ready to go, and I can smell it last night. Man. And then you just watched it today. It wasn't perfect early, but man, we took over and we went. And that is what we're about. That's what we're about. I can tell you this. What we just did today is going to put us in a high commodity come next week. We'll be the hot game. 
All right, because the fact of the matter is we just extended ourselves one more week for the playoffs. Yeah, we just did. We just guaranteed ourselves one more week. That's how that's supposed to feel, man. All three phases for all four quarters. We ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Enjoy this. Let's get back to work, man. Yes, sir. Family on three. One, two, three. Hey. After allowing 570 yards of total offense in week 16, this Detroit Lions defense bounced back against the Bears, allowing just 230 yards of total offense. That included 30 in the air. I sat down to talk with defensive lineman John Kaminsky about the havoc this Detroit defense caused last Sunday. That's up next. Inside the Pride is presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and sponsored by Priority Health, Kroger, and by Henry Ford Health. Before you got here to Detroit, you were released by Atlanta. What was the toughest part of the journey after you learned that news and how to find a new home? After Atlanta, it was, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Out of college, you know, Atlanta was the, guy, the guys that gave me the shot and so I was all in on Atlanta, that's all I knew. And then once that, that chapter of my life ended, it was up in the air, who was gonna take me? Is there anybody that's gonna take me? And um, they've taken me with open arms and love the players, love the coaches, love the culture, so. Coming out of high school, it sounded like the same story. Only one scholarship offered to Division II, Charleston. How full circle was that moment to know that you could get through that adversity again because you've already done it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely helped out um, knowing that I just put hard work and bet on myself and you don't need a bunch of attention to um, be good enough. I mean, as long as you know it in your head and you put the work in. So to push through that and then any obstacle that's came my way in the NFL, it's definitely helped with that. You had some adversity this season. You had a club, Coach Campbell likes to call it, on your right hand. What exactly were you dealing with midseason? Yeah, um, just broke my thumb on a, on a routine play, and we had to do some surgery, pin it back together. Um, and then it was only safe to play with a big club on. And so that's what we did. We put the big club on, and I grew used to it. And I was cleared from it a couple weeks ago, but I've just I've grown used to it, and it's been working, so I've been keeping it on. So somehow you were not placed on injured reserve. How did you make it back to the football field? Yeah, it was, um, we didn't want to miss a full four games because that's what I was going to do. So it was three games and a bye week. So the timing of that helped out. Um, in those first few weeks, yeah, it, it hurt a little bit and it was, it limited me. But after I got used to it and uh, the pain kind of subsided over time as it's healed and um, I've kind of learned my limitations on the field and, and found ways to work around it. Your mission on the field, affect the quarterback. You had 26 pressures in your first three seasons in the NFL. This season alone, 39 pressures. How do you possibly explain your production this season? The amount of time I've spent on the field and I feel that I'm in a, my best position on the field. I'm playing end on first and second down and they're moving me on the inside and third down. Um, and I really haven't had that full opportunity yet in the NFL. So that's why I was able to produce. You and wife Brittany welcome baby Emerson right before training camp started. Hard Knocks did a nice little feature on you guys. How much can we credit baby Emerson with your production this season? Yeah, I would say that th there's a lot to do with uh, Emerson with that. Um, just the motivation, uh, little things that come into your head before the game, nervousness, fears that maybe I had my first three years. Once you have a baby, it's she doesn't want you to have those fears and she doesn't want you to be limited to to you as a player so it's helped set me free and help me to relax and help me to um, be my full self out there this defense is going up against one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it aaron Rodgers in green bay how does your defense disrupt him all night long come sunday night yeah it's like i said it's going to take everybody doing their job it's going to be the pass rushers we're going to need those young guys to step up again we're going to need our secondary to cover well and our linebackers to scrape over the top make tackles um, do their job. No, not one person has to do too much. Um, so we just need to relax, play our brand of football, and we'll be just fine. Welcome back to Inside the Pride. I'm now joined by head coach Dan Campbell. Coach, you said your team, they are deserving of playing in prime time in Green Bay Sunday night. It's official. Why are your Detroit Lions made to rise to the occasion? Yeah, listen, um, 
I'm, you can already tell I'm excited. So uh, I just, I, I know what we've been through this season and, and we're there again, we're a young, hungry team with the right veterans that we have that I think are battle tested and ready to go. And so it's a great stage for them just to get a taste of this environment and, and just cut it loose, let it loose and let's go, man. Let's see where we, let's see where we stand. Your young team is going to get a crack at one of the best to ever do it veteran quarterback Aaron Rodgers. But when this Packers offense runs the ball 50% of the time in a game, they're 5-0. and So you've got to give credit to Aaron Jones. Why is your run defense well equipped to limit Jones, who has over 1,000 yards rushing this season? Yeah, most quarterbacks, man, it's your best friend. Because you get a run game, you can play action. There's a number of things you can do that, that alleviate a little bit of pressure. But, but certainly this year it's been very good for him. This is, look, this is a short yardage set they do a lot of quarterback sneak out of this same thing they push the quarterback they get you all bunched up in here and then they whoosh, out on the perimeter and when you have a guy like Aaron Jones you just want to know you can get him started can we get him on the perimeter with space yes you can well let him do the rest and it's easy when you know you can do that and so we can't allow him to get on the perimeter because he is a very dangerous running back this defense is clicking as much as the Packers offense, but linebacker Quay Walker, no one gets to the ball more than he does, leaves the team in tackles. So what does your offense have to be weary of to keep him off his assignment each snap? Yeah, two, two of the players that I think are bell cows for them is 97 is one of them, and I think seven, even though he's a rookie, is the other one. Okay, this guy, we got to know where he's at at all times because I tell you what, he's – all right, he's a phenomenal athlete, but he's he's very aggressive, he's very instinctive, he's a finisher, and he's violent. And uh, to play the linebacker position, you have to be all of those to be a really good player. And, man, he, he just shows up time and time again. So we cannot sleep on this guy because he's versatile. You can't sleep on Jair Alexander there, cornerback in the secondary. He shut down the best receiver in the league last week, Justin Jefferson. But you have so many targets in your receiving game. How will that aid you in making sure Alexander is a non-factor? Well, he's another guy. We talked about Quay. You better know where he is at all times to, to try to take him away from the run game. This guy, you got to know where he is at all times in the pass game, you know, and if you when you're going to throw at him, you have to be very selective on what you're going to throw, who you're throwing to and how you're going to do it, because he is very dangerous. And look, you're, you're talented, you're a competitor and, and you got a skill set. Uh, that's a guy that you, you have to respect. You have to respect. And so but we understand who he is, what he's capable of. We'll have a good game plan and we'll be very selective on, on how we go after him if we're going to go after him. Coach, you played in this league. What are you telling to your, your team as a former player to really disrupt all three phases that are clicking right now for Green Bay? Yeah, I think, man, I, there again, I want them to know that this is a big moment. I mean, this is big. And I really feel like we have the right type of guys on this team. And I know, I know it'll be a new experience. But, man, I just think our guys will thrive in it. I think they'll, they're going to love every minute of this. And I think they understand or will understand that the intensity is going to be elevated. And because they're going to have to treat it that way too if we are. And uh, it's just, you can't ask for anything better. You just can't. The Detroit Lions will kick off week 18 in Green Bay Sunday night on primetime. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. on Football Night in America with game time slated for 8.20 p.m. on NBC. Inside the Pride presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort. We'll be right back. I want to help grieving kids, grieving families, and get them to the outdoors too and help, help. I think, it, I think it's a therapy that you don't even realize is a therapy. Honestly, my whole junior season was kind of a blur. Um, just kind of taking her day by day. I, I, it was horrible to be honest. And it's, uh, I think I almost ran away from the grief, tried to distract myself with football. My mom and Coach B were always telling me to that I need to talk to a therapist and whatnot, and I kind of just buried it all. And that ended up kind of, I mean, it's, that's why, I mean, I'm still going through a lot with it. And, uh, but then I, I come to terms with the fact that I do have this platform, right? I want to be there for them. I want to let them know that maybe a, a football player in the NFL is going through it. And uh, I don't really want to tell people how to grieve, but I just want to provide an outlet, an outlet that helped me. My eight-year-old especially, she's always looking for someone who's like her, another eight-year-old girl who's lost her dad. or, you know. So it's so wonderful to be where we have this really incredible, successful athlete um, who has something in common with these young kids who would look up to him. I think that's a really wonderful opportunity. Yeah, we're excited. He's been thinking about doing something like this for a while, so it's fun to see it come to life. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, there they are, right there. It's Captain Pete's boat. Uh, like the boat <laughs> yeah, we're going right now. Not the fish. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. All right, let's catch a fish. Here, let's get this. You ready? We're gonna take this thing, throw it. Nice. All right. And then you're just gonna wait for that bobber to go down, okay? Yeah. All right. See that bobber over there? You gotta watch that. If it goes down, that means you have a fish. Yep. Yeah. No, you're looking at the birds, yeah. There we go. Here, reel up a little bit. Alright. Let's recast it. Yeah, I know how to dump. Oh, you do? Alright. Oh, jeez. Kind of. I'm hooked. You got me. You got a big one. Yeah. You look him. You look me right in the butt. <laughs> One thing that's really, really like rewarding about fishing, when you have a plan and the plan comes together, it is like you made it. And I don't know, it just must have hit me today, but I mean, me and my dad and uh, my mom, we've kind of planned this, you know, if that makes sense. This has always kind of been the goal uh, since day one. I. I I was uh, at my mom's house yesterday and we were going through some of my school projects from middle school. And I, I it was either middle school or elementary school. It's the first time I started writing in cursive, whatever age that was. Hopefully it was elementary school, not middle school for anybody judging me. But uh, my, I, read, I had wrote that my goal was to make it to the NFL and be able to take care of my parents. And they're just, uh, my dad is, and my mom are just my people, you know, and I'm very grateful for them. And, uh, you know, my dad's not here, but I'm very excited to take care of my mom. Uh, Cause I had an amazing childhood, man. And um, I'm just so proud of the way I was raised and how I was raised and uh, my upbringing. And uh, to, to be able to give back to my mom, I wish I could give back to my dad and, you know, go fishing with him and everything, but to be able to give back to my mom and my family means the world. I mean, that my dad, me playing football was everything to my dad. Um, my brothers give, my brother and sisters give me crap because my dad used to get Google alerts if any time anybody mentioned my name in an article or anything, he would get an email and he would just sit there and read them out loud to them while I was all at college when my dad passed away. I guess you could say the blessing out of it. I just realized that every single second matters. I believe that time is the most valuable thing in the world. I just wanna, I just wanna live, you know? Just soaking it all up, um, fishing, adventuring. I wanna be even half the dad my dad was. I wanna live day by day, taking it all in and not taking anything for granted. I am Frank Ragnow. Center Frank Ragnow is a man with a plan and now a two-time Pro Bowler. His Under the Helmet feature is in honor of his dad, John, a.k.a. Rags Ragnow. And you can support the Rags Remembered Foundation with donations so more grieving kids can experience the outdoors. We'll be right back. Before we wrap up today's episode of Inside the Pride, it is time for Rogers Retweets. This might be one of my favorite weeks so far because the first person I'm featuring is my very own dad. This is Michael Rogers, everyone. He whipped this sweater out after the Chicago Bears defeat, and I am in awe. I didn't even know he had this sweater. Touchdown, lights up. There were plenty of those against the Chicago Bears. I'm impressed. My dad is the coolest. Shout out to Mike Rogers. Love you, Dad. And James Houston, craziest stat line in the NFL this season per Daniel Jeremiah. Total tackles, 11. He's had eight sacks. Get this, James Houston, 24% of the time when he rushes the passer, he wins that battle. Fifth best among pass rushers in the NFL with a minimum of 75 snaps. James Houston, you have put everyone on alert. He is having one heck of a season. 
That wraps up this edition of Rogers Retweets on this episode of Inside the Pride. Thanks so much for tuning in. Reminder, Detroit Lions kick off against the Green Bay Packers this Sunday. We'll see you there.